of the Lord together and praise Him day to day. For He brought us together to love Him and serve Him always. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Do not ask me to turn away, for I will follow you. We'll serve the Lord together. In day to day, for he brought us together to love him and serve him always. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Facebook live worship. I have to say I am very impressed because lots of names have been coming up on the on the screen of people who uh, who are watching. I have to say that I had little faith. I said to Ellen, oh, I guess a lot of people, uh, instead of uh, joining in live at nine o'clock, will wait and uh, watch it later at half past ten or, uh, or, or maybe on, on YouTube later on. But uh, as I say, I've been really uh, Im impressed by, uh, by the number of names that have come up on the screen. And you'd obviously uh, all set your uh, alarm clocks early for this Sunday morning uh, so that you could be here at, uh, at, at nine o'clock. Uh, and I know that there are, are, are three people in, in cell uh, who usually uh, meet together in, in the garden of one of them. And I said to, uh, to Ellen, no, I don't think they'll be meeting in, uh, in, in Maureen's garden this morning at nine o'clock in the rain. But yes, uh, th those names have come up uh, on the screen. So that's really uh, encouraging that, uh, that you've made that, uh, that effort to join us uh, for, uh, for our live uh, worship this, this morning. So we're continuing with the story of Ruth and we'll be into uh, chapter three of Ruth today. And we uh, began our worship as we did a fortnight ago by uh, singing that song based on uh, those words from uh, Ruth chapter one, where Ruth uh, makes her commitment to uh, Naomi to, uh, to, to journey with her as she makes her way uh, back to, uh, to, to Bethlehem. And last week we continued the story and heard about how uh, Ruth found work in the harvest fields of Boaz. So we'll see how the, uh, the story continues today. But we come into the presence of a God who loves us, a God whose glory shines all around us and whose power moves in our lives. So wherever we are this morning, we are in the presence of the Lord. And so we affirm that as we sing, Be still, for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. Still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand on holy ground. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. is shining all around. Be still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. He comes to cleanse and heal, to minister his grace. The world 
Now let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we know that wherever we are, we are in your presence. For you are beyond time and space. You are with us always and everywhere. Wherever we are, we can be on holy ground as we recognise the presence of our holy God. Your glory shines all around us in the wonder and beauty, the variety and diversity of your creation. In and through the lives of those who you have made in your image, and most of all, in Jesus Christ, your Son. Your power moves around us and within us as we worship you today. And so we pray that we may know your presence, see your glory and feel your power. There is no sin in you, O God, but we are weak and full of sin. And so we ask your forgiveness and your cleansing. By your power, shown in Jesus who died for us, make us whole and enable us to walk in newness of life, we pray, for Jesus' sake. Amen. And so we continue the uh, story of Ruth, and Alan is going to read from Ruth chapter 3. One day, Ruth's mother-in-law, Naomi, said to her, My daughter, I must find a home for you, where you will be well provided for. Now Boaz, with whose women you have worked, is a relative of ours. Tonight he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash, put on perfume, and get dressed in your best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor. But don't let him know you're there until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, note the place where he is lying. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. I will do whatever you say, Ruth answered. So she went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. When Boaz had finished eating and drinking, he was in good spirits. He went over to lie at the end of the grain pile. Ruth approached quietly, uncovered his feet and lay down. In the middle of the night, something startled the man. He turned and there was a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? he asked. I am your servant, Ruth, she said. Spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are a guardian's redeemer of our family. The Lord bless you, daughter, he replied. This kindness is greater than that which you showed earlier. You have not run up after the younger men, whether rich or poor. And now, my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all you ask. All the people of my town know that you are a woman of noble, noble character. Although it is true I am a guardian redeemer of our family, there is another who is more closely related than I. Stay here for the night, and in the morning, if he wants to do his duty as your guardian redeemer, good, let him redeem you. But if he is not willing, as surely as the Lord lives, I will do it. Lie here until morning. So she lay at his feet until morning, 
that got up before anyone could be recognised and he said, no one must know that a woman came to the threshing floor. He also said, bring me the shawl you are wearing and hold it out. When she did so, he poured into it six measures of barley and placed a bundle on her. Then he went back to town. When Naomi came to her mother-in-law, sorry, when Ruth came to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, How did it go, my daughter? Then she told her everything Boaz had done for her, and added, He gave me these six measures of barley, saying, Don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Then Naomi said, Wait, my daughter, until you find out what happens, for the man will not rest until the matter is settled today. You might think this is a bit of a uh, contrived kind of link, and it, uh, it, it, it probably is, but uh, I, I was thinking uh, about Boaz sitting, uh, sorry, about Ruth, uh, at the feet of Boaz and not uh, kind of uh, rushing away from his presence and so the uh, the hymn that we're going to sing now came to mind to be in your presence to sit at your feet to be in your presence not rushing away we may be in the presence of other human beings in our homes or we may be on our own but whether we're amongst others or whether we are alone we are with our God we are in his presence and this morning we can uh, enjoy being in his presence as we worship and as we pray. So let's sing, to be in your presence, to sit at your feet. This is my desire, O Lord. This is my desire.
I can hardly believe it. it's nearly four months since I was packing a few things back in Moab to bring with me to Bethlehem. I knew I had to travel light. It would be a long journey on foot and I might need to carry Naomi's belongings as well as my own. It wasn't an easy decision to leave Moab, but I had brothers and sisters to care for my parents in their old age, and Naomi had no one. She kept saying how she had friends in Bethlehem who'd look after her, but I wasn't so sure. It was a long time since she'd lived there, and things moved up, move on. It was such a relief when Jacob allowed me to glean in the harvest fields belonging to Boaz. If it hadn't been for that, I don't know how Naomi and I would have survived. People around here are poor. They don't have food to spare. I wasn't sure about Boaz to begin with. He was a bit in your face, as they say, but I knew I mustn't get on the wrong side of him if I wanted to go on working in his field. The women were so kind to me, making sure there was always corn for me to glean and sharing their meagre food with me when we had a break. Then they'd start teasing me about Boaz, saying that they could tell he really liked me. He'd be a really good catch, they'd say. No type, plenty of money. He's been waiting years for the right woman to come along. I smiled and blushed. It was all in good part, and I was, ju I was just glad to be accepted amongst these women who could so easily have rejected me as a foreigner. And to be honest, the more I got to know Boaz, the more I liked him. There must have been some talk in the town, and word got back to Naomi about me and Boaz. It's the end of the harvest just now, so everybody's in party mood. I've never been much of a party girl, and Naomi says that she's too old for living it up. But yesterday evening, when I was just thinking of getting ready for bed, she told me to go and change into my best clothes, put on some perfume and get ready to go out. It's time to let Boaz know how you feel about him, she said. He'll be out celebrating tonight, and if I know Boaz, he'll have had so much to eat and drink that he'll fall asleep on the threshing floor. Now you get yourself down there, but don't let him see you. Then when he lies down, just lift his cloak from over his feet and lie near to him. So, strange as it sounds, that's just what I did. Boaz was asleep, and I dropped off to sleep as well, until there was a loud bang in the middle of the night, which woke both of us up. Boaz shot up and felt me next to him. Who's there? he shouted. So I had to own up. Then I remembered that Naomi had told me to ask Boaz to spread the corner of his cloak over me. They have some funny customs, these Bethlehemites. But anyway, I did as Naomi had said. Then Boaz sat close to me and told me he cared for me and that if I wanted him to, he'd look after me for the rest of my life. But then he said that Naomi had a closely, closer relative than him, who ought to be given the first opportunity to marry me if he wanted to. As I said, these Bethlehem folk have some strange customs. Couldn't Boaz see it was him I wanted to be with, not some stranger? I stayed a while longer. I felt safe with Boaz. Of course, I had to leave before daylight. If anybody saw me, tongues would really start wagging. Before I left, Boaz told me to give him my shawl, and he filled it with barley to take home with me. Needless to say, Naomi was at the door when I arrived, wanting to know how my evening had gone. Her eyes nearly popped out of her head when she saw the shawl full of barley. Apparently the pregnant looking shawl was a sign that there'll be a baby on the way soon. Well, it won't be yet, I can tell you. Nothing will happen before Boaz and I are properly married. And Boaz? Oh, he's gone into town to look up his closer relative. I sometimes think life is much more straightforward in Moab, but if Naomi has taught me anything, 
it's that I have to trust God. That's what she does. And slowly, I'm learning to do the same. I remember uh, some years ago at a Harvest Festival service, I preached what is called a narrative sermon or a story sermon, which means that I spoke as though I was a biblical character, which is just what uh, Ellen and I have been doing uh, each week with the characters from uh, the Book of Ruth. So you may remember a fortnight ago, uh, Ellen uh, spoke as though she was Orpah, and then last week uh, I spoke as though I was Boaz, and we've just heard Ellen speak as though uh, she was Ruth. So the idea of a, uh, a narrative sermon or a story sermon is that it does just, uh, doesn't just retell the story, but, but it offers some uh, kind of point for, uh, for reflection in the way that uh, this morning's story finished with, uh, with, with Ruth saying about learning to, uh, to trust God. Uh, so on this occasion a few years ago when I took the part of Boaz, I didn't just cover... Uh, one chapter as I did last week but but I covered uh, the whole of uh, of Boaz's uh, role in the in the story and I always remember one of the uh, congregation saying to me afterwards with a twinkle in her eye that she was getting a bit worried when I got to the part of the story which we've heard this morning about Boaz and Ruth at the threshing, threshing floor she was concerned that uh, the content might not be very suitable for an all-age service and that the details of what went on on the threshing floor might not be permitted before the nine o'clock watershed. Now, whilst we might prefer to skirt round it, there's clearly a sexual element to this part of the story. In the Old Testament, feet is sometimes used as a euphemism for sexual organs, and lying down might mean a bit more than just lying down. As I've said in previous weeks, the story of Ruth is very much about human relationships. And as the story unfolds, the writer wants us to see that God is at work in and through human relationships. God is at work to bring about the best for those involved in the story. In the earlier part of the story, Naomi wanted the best for Orpah and Ruth. It was best for them to stay within the security of their own homes and families, she thought. Boaz wanted the best for Ruth, so he offered her protection as she worked in his fields, and he took his duty as guardian redeemer seriously. At the beginning of today's chapter, we hear how Naomi again wanted the best for Ruth. My daughter, I must find a home for you where you'll be well provided for. Surely it is in, within the purposes of God that all of us should want the best for each other. We sometimes talk about making the best of a bad situation, and we've seen something of that over these last few weeks, as communities have pulled together and as individuals have helped their neighbours. It's natural to want the best for those to whom we are closest. Understandably, Naomi wanted the best for Ruth, who'd become to her more of a daughter than a daughter-in-law. We want the best for our children and our grandchildren, for our ageing parents and for our close friends. But what about those who seem more remote? Do we want the best for the asylum seeker and the refugee? Do we want the best for the neglected child and the victim of domestic abuse? Do we want the best for those discriminated against because of their colour or their race? Ruth could so easily have found herself rejected, ostracised, even molested. But instead she appears to have been surrounded by people who wanted the best for her, and that had a very positive outcome. So how can we show to other people that we want the best for them? Sometimes it might be by being there for them. 
Sometimes it might be by speaking out on their behalf or remembering them in our prayers or supporting the work of an organisation which works to create the best possible outcome for particular groups of people. In the story of Ruth, we see the hand of God at work to bring about the best for those like Naomi, who felt that life had dealt them a rough deal, and those like Ruth, a stranger in a foreign land. But it was through what we might call the kindness of strangers that the best came about. We can want the best and we can help to bring about the best for people who we don't even know. Whatever might have happened on the threshing floor between Boaz and Ruth, his words to Ruth suggested that he wanted the best for her. The Lord bless you, my daughter, he said. The kindness is greater than that which you showed earlier. You have not run after the younger men, whether rich or poor. And now, my daughter, don't be afraid, for I will do for you all that you ask. Imagine how those words must have made Ruth feel. She must have felt really special, really affirmed in who she was and in what she had done. Though I showed that he wanted the best for her through the generous amount of barley that he gave her to take home. The God who comes to us in Jesus is a God who wants the best for us. Things may not always work out as well in our lives and in our relationships as they appear to have done for Ruth and Boaz and Naomi. But even in the difficulties and the uncertainties of human life and relationships, God wants the best for us. Many times in the Gospel stories, Jesus is heard to say to people the words which Boaz said to Ruth. Don't be afraid. By his Spirit, God speaks those words to you and to me today. Don't be afraid, Boaz said to Ruth. I will do for you all you ask. Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do for you. Of course, that doesn't mean we can have whatever we want, but it does mean that when we pray, not only in the name of Jesus, but in keeping with his nature, he will give us what we need, and more often, much more besides. And we are called to be uh, channels of his generosity to others, so that they too can have the best. This year's president and vice president of the Methodist Conference have chosen as their theme for, the, for their year of office the words, the best of all is God is with us. Words recorded as having been spoken by John Wesley as he neared the end of his life. The best of all is God is with us. God was with Ruth and Naomi bringing about the best in a difficult and trying situation. And God is with us in the difficulties and the challenges of our own lives and our own circumstances, bringing about the best. God seeks the best for all humanity and for all creation. And he chooses to work with us in bringing about the best that can be. The best of all is, God is with us. And that is our next hymn. Best of all is, God is with us. God will hold and never fail. Keep that truth when storms are raging. God remains, though faith is frail. Best of all is God is with us, God will hold and never fail. Keep 
Keep the truth when storms are raging, God remains so faith is frail. Best of all is God is with us, life goes on and needs are bad. God is strongest in our weakness, love renews will not forget. Best of all is God is with us, hearts are challenged, strangely warm. Faith is deepened, courage strengthened, grace received and hope reformed. Best of all is God is with us in our joy and through our pain. Till that final acclamation, life is Christ and death is gain. Best of all is God is with us as we scale eternal highs. Love grows stronger, undiminished, earth grows in my heaven's light. As you know, each week I've been uh, basing our prayers for others around uh, the the theme of the, the chapter from Ruth that we've been uh, focusing on. And again, uh, I'm going to do that in our prayers this morning. And when I say the words, loving Lord, if you'd like to join in and say with me, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, hear yeah. our prayer. So let's pray. As we think of how Naomi wanted to find a home for Ruth where she would be well provided for. So we bring our prayers for all who are homeless. We pray for the many homeless people who sleep rough on the streets of our towns and cities. And for the increasing numbers of migrants and refugees with no place to call home. We continue to pray for the many people made homeless in Beirut as a result of the explosion. We pray that national and international leaders may have the same kind of heart as Naomi and a desire to try and ensure that all people are well provided for. Loving Lord, hear our prayer. As we think of how Boaz showed love and respect for Ruth. So we pray for those who find themselves in relationships where there is no love and respect. We pray for those in marriages which have become tense or have broken down. And for all who are going through the pain of divorce or separation. We pray for those who have been forced into marriage and for all who have been the victims of grooming or abuse. We pray that as a society we may learn to love and respect one another, so that all people can be helped to realise their full potential as those created in your image. Loving Lord, hear our prayer. As we think of how Boaz was intent on doing what was right, so we pray that we and all people may seek to create a world where all will do justly and love mercy. We pray for those who feel that they have been wrongly judged or unfairly treated. Particularly we pray for young people who feel that their A-level results are unfair and whose futures now hang in the balance. We pray for nations where there is no justice, where governments are corrupt and where the poor have no voice. We pray for Belarus and other places where people have been tortured and where there is unrest, that justice may prevail. 
mentioned as we've commemorated the anniversary of VJ Day. We remember those who did what they believed to be right in the causes of freedom, peace and justice, but who paid the ultimate sacrifice. And so we pray for all who carry the scars of war. Loving Lord, hear our prayer. As we think of how Boaz was generous to Ruth and Naomi, so we pray that we may learn to live generously and that your church throughout the world may reach out generously to neighbours and communities. We give thanks for the generous spirit which has prevailed in so many places in re recent months, that we may learn from this going forward. Help us to be generous in sharing your good gifts, both materially and spiritually, that all may be helped to share in the feast of life. Loving Lord, hear yeah. our prayer. And now as we usually do, we'll have a time of quiet when you can pray for uh, those people and those situations for whom or for which you particularly feel the need to pray for this morning. And if there are any uh, prayer requests to share, then I'll uh, share those with everyone else and we can uh, pray for those people or those situations together. We're asked to give thanks for Jan, who has just got a job after being employed for, uh, sorry, after being unemployed for nine months. And as we uh, give thanks for that, we uh, remember the many people who have uh, become unemployed as a result of the pandemic. We think of those who are still furloughed and who fear that they may not be going back to work. We pray for our government as they continue to deal with this very uh, difficult situation. pray for all who are unwell. Earlier uh, in the week I was asked if we'd remember Stephen uh, this morning. Stephen is undergoing uh, treatment for cancer at the moment and so we pray uh, for him and for his wife Marion.
loving Lord, hear yeah. our prayer. Our prayers we offer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, our brother and our friend. Amen. And we share together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As I've said previously, the story of uh, Ruth and Naomi is very much about journeying. They journeyed from uh, from Moab to uh, to Bethlehem, and now the, uh, the the journey continues in a very different kind of way as the uh, relationship uh, between Boaz and Ruth develops. So uh, next Sunday morning, we'll uh, hear the final uh, chapter from the, the book of Ruth, and uh, and we'll find out uh, how the uh, how, how the story ends. It's a bit pity, really, that we're already familiar with it, isn't it? It'd be much more of a, a kind of cliffhanger wouldn't it if we um, if we didn't know but hopefully we'll still find something uh, some, something new to discover in the story uh, and how it ends even though it may be familiar to us so continuing that to uh, that, that that journeying theme uh, we're going to finish this morning by singing uh, one more step along the world I go and then uh, after this service Ellen and I will be taking uh, one more step but it won't be one more step it will be one more drive because we'll be getting in the car and going over to uh, to, to Brayton uh, which is one of the village churches uh, where I minister just outside Selby uh, and I'll be taking my, my first church service well no that's not true is it because these services are all church services that's uh, I'll be taking my first service in a church building since the uh, since the middle of March and then uh, I'm going to be doing that uh, hopefully uh, every Sunday from, uh, from from now onwards, uh, which means that our online worship will continue at, uh, at, at nine o'clock. So as I said at the start, it was just great to see uh, so many uh, so many names coming up and to know that uh, so many of you had, uh, had made that effort to, uh, to join in earlier uh, this morning. So uh, look forward to your uh, virtual company again uh, next week for uh, our Facebook live worship at nine o'clock. So one more step along the world I go and it's from the old, I travel to the new, keep me travelling along with you. One more step along the world I go, one more step along the world I go, from the old things to the new. Travelling along with you And it's from the old I travel to the new He'd be travelling along with you Round the corner of the world I turn More and more about the world I love All the new things that I see You'll be looking out along with me to the new he'd be travelling along with you as I travel through the bad and good he'd be travelling the way I should but I see no way to go you'll be shouting me the way I know and it's from the old I travel to the new He'd be travelling along with you Give me courage when the world is rough Keep me loving when the world is tough Live and sing in all I do He'd be travelling along with you And this from the old I travel to the new He'd be travelling along with
And so let's bl uh, virtually bless each other as we share in saying the familiar words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.